All right, okay. Everyone can hear me okay? Yes, awesome. Um, hello everyone, my name is Melissa. I'm a developer relations engineer at Langflow. Um, today we're gonna talk about MCPs in Langflow and what is it, um, how we're doing it, and why we're doing it, and show a lot of demos. So um, again, this is me. Um, here's where to find me, here's how to connect. Um, I'm a developer relations engineer, as I said. What is that? We relate to engineers um, and we relate to developers, specifically those who are developing in AI and Gen AI. Um, and also little tidbits, I am a matcha latte connoisseur. I know the cafe um, scene in SF, because I'm from East Bay, and I know the cafe scene in SF is pretty big, especially with matcha, so if you have any recs, let me know after the talk. All right, quick agenda. We're gonna talk about what is Langflow. Um, we're gonna break down some of the components and how you can use them for building um, AI workflows and AI agents, and then also MCP capabilities in Langflow, what that looks like, um, how we're supporting it, and then a bunch of demos. So I'm really hoping that the demo gods are really looking over me um, tonight because I have a bunch to show you and a lot of ground to cover. Starting now, <laughs> let's go into one that I have. So um, I mean, raise your hand if you're like in the job hunt right now. No one. Okay, that's a first. Well, if you were and you understand um, the, the struggle, right? When you're looking for a job, you have to go and iterate through your resume depending on what the role is. Um, so I built this like a really quick app um, that kind of handles that. So developer relations engineer, say I'm trying to apply to a specific role. Um, and I have a resume here like John Doe. Um, he's a software engineer, here's his experience. Um, and he wants to use this app which will do two things. So the first thing is recommend some improvements and suggestions on his resume based on the current um, content on his resume, and then return back a modified version of that resume. And we can hop into the code real quick of what that looks like. This is a really basic Streamlit app. Um, here's where we're kind of handling um, the input of the user, so we have their desired role, we have their uh, file, which is their resume that they're uploading. And then we have a function here called run Langflow API. And all it is is it's pointing to this URL. I'll get to that in a second. And it's passing in a payload, which are the values that we're asking from the user. Uh, so what is this URL? What is Langflow? And what is the flow that it's pointing to? Um, and you see, we get back the suggestions for the resume. It's giving um, some current uh, market trends. It's doing all of these things to uh, kind of compare what you currently have. Um, keyword optimization, and so on. Um, well, this is what's happening in the background. What you're looking at is Langflow, um, and the flow here looks a bit complex, but I'll walk you through um, step by step. So as I was mentioning, we have the chat input and we have the file input from the user. And the two steps that I was describing where it does the suggestions and then the resume building um, is done by doing this multi-agent architecture. Um, it has an orchestrator agent that's basically taking the full request, and then it's breaking that into two tasks, um, giving those into two agents. And then you might notice up here that this agent is using what's called the MCP connection or the MCP server tool in Langflow. And it's using Tavoli. Have anyone heard of Tavoli before? Yeah, nice. Um, to look up the current job market trends, um, do some like research optimization, um, look up keywords, 2025 uh, DevRel role, trends, things like that, and applying that to its recommendations. And just by clicking that submit button in the UI that we just showed, it's executing this flow, it's hitting um, each of these components that you see, and then it's returning this response uh, that we see to the user back in the UI. So I wanted to start off with that. We'll hop back here and talk about exactly what is Langflow. You just saw it. Um, it's a visual interface for developers who are building AI agents, AI workflows, and now MCP servers as well. Um, from what you saw, you have the ability to kind of use different components, um, drag and drop, but also you have the ability to go into the code behind the scenes. So it's a visual uh, first platform, but not visual only. And I'll get into what that means a little bit later as well. Uh, it's Python native, so my developers who are building in Python, you can build custom components as well. Um, you can adjust inputs and outputs, you can bring in your own integrations, and it's open source, so you can contribute your own components to the, to the tool as well. Um, and what you saw there, what I was describing was this multi-agent architecture. Um, every uh, 
all flows that you're building within Lankflow can use an agent component. Um, and within those components as well, you have this uh, kind of granular capability to um, modif change the model, uh, modify the temperature of how precise, how creative the, the agent can be, um, the prompts, uh, um, and different things as well. And anything in that Langflow flow that you saw, any component that you saw, can then become a tool for the agent. So we have this idea of agents using tools, and now we're kind of moving into this world of MCP servers. And the difference between um, using agents with their tool calling is that we have MCP servers that have all the tools built into it already. It has tool descriptions, it has um, the name of the tools for us, um, but you still have this ability to use an MCP server as a tool for an agent. So how is Langflow doing that? Well, recently um, we've kind of released a lot with, uh, we're doing a lot of things with MCP with intention um, here in Langflow. You saw just now that we're using uh, Langflow as an MCP client where we can bring in MCP servers and use them in workflows. Um, but Langflow in itself is also an MCP server. So I'll go into that a little bit of what that means later on as well. Um, so you can use, uh, as a client, use any MCP components to call external tools. As we saw, we use the Tavoli search component. And then the server uh, aspect of itself is something I'll go into a little bit right now so that you can use them in your other um, MCP clients. Uh, so let's take this really simple example here, um, a little bit more simple than the resume uh, flow that we saw. Here we have a chat input going into an agent and then it's gonna give us an output. So I can go into this playground here and I can type hi, the agent will respond to me using the model, awesome. Um, and then you see here that I have this MCP connection uh, using the fetch server here. Um, so what's great about this is that it's really easy to connect to MCP servers in Langflow. Um, I can use this, I can go into the, uh, the GitHub and see other community servers that were contributed. Um, I want to look up one that is specifically handling charts, quick charts. And we'll connect a MCP server into Langflow in just a few uh, seconds. So um, there's two ways to connect an MCP uh, server to Langflow with STDIO and uh, SSE. Um, but we're going to be doing it this way where we just grab the start command, head back into our flow, and I believe it was npx. Y, and I'm gonna click refresh. Um, and just like that, you see the tools available for you to choose. You could use the MCP server standalone, um, or as I showed earlier, you could flip it into tool mode. And then now this MCP server can be used as a tool for your agent. So now I'm gonna hook this up to my agent, and then I can ask it questions uh, such as, I know that's a little bit hard to see, sorry, but let's see. Um, what are the current exchange rates, or what are the highest currency exchange rates? And I ask it this question specifically because the model won't know, if you're asking like a basic prompting call to a model, um, it won't know what the current exchange rates are. So it has to use the fetch MCP server to get the um, up, most up to date. Oh, I wasn't able to retrieve it, why not? Uh, let's see. Uh, show me the latest. <laughs> Sometimes you have to like ask it kind of differently and then it will respond. Show me the latest currency exchange rates. There we go. Okay. So um, now it's, it returns some back. If I, do the, if I show this drop down, you see here that it executed that fetch MCP server tool. Um, here is the input, or here is what it responded back with. So it used um, an API to get the current exchange rates. Um, and then it's uh, returned this back to uh, OpenAI's model to then formulate this response for us. Um, and then um, I just brought in that charts MCP server. So let's see if we can put this data into a chart. And there we go. We saw it use the generate chart tool that we literally just configured right now um, that we brought in, um, and then it put it into a chart for us. So that was pretty cool. Thank you. Um, and 
So that was a couple of different ways aside from the uh, resume tool that I showed you to use Langflow as an MCP client. Um, how do we use it as an MCP server? I keep saying that Langflow can also be an MCP server. Um, so all of these, if I were to want to use this tool in a, in a, in a client like Cursor or something, um, I can use the publish uh, button right here. I can bring this flow into my app, same as I showed earlier where it was pointing to the URL. Um, or I can publish this as an MCP server that I can use. Um, so if you see on the left side of the screen here, I have a bunch of projects, and within these projects are multiple flows. So essentially, you can export these projects out as MCP servers, and each of your flows end up becoming tools. So um, I can copy this command, and you see these are all the names of the flows that I've created, which end up being tools. I can configure them. Um, I can change the names and the descriptions of them as well. Um, and then I can hop back into my cursor and configure it here. So actually, I think I already have this configured here. Um, but if I wanted to uh, add this myself, then you would you know, go through the process, click new MCP server, paste that uh, here that we got straight from Langflow. You would only need this because we already have the MCP servers up there. And then paste it in here. But of course, this is a copy, so uh, we don't need to do that. And then you should see that um, it's connected, or it, it is trying to connect to my Langflow flow. Um, and then you'll see the different tools, AKA the flows that we've just built um, at your disposal to use within Cursor. So um, what I did in Langflow is I built kind of a code reviewer agent. So um, you can get really, uh, really crazy with these flows sometimes, and I kind of chain just like a bunch of different agents together, also still using the Tavoli uh, server to like bring in outside documentation. Um, one's doing like the code parsing, one is doing the issue detection and bringing in outside resources to apply to the uh, review, and then it's kind of generating a report at the end. So um, let's try that and hope that it loads here in cursor. So I'm just gonna like highlight a line add it to the chat and say, review these lines of code using the code reviewer. And here it should use the code reviewer agent, AKA our link flow flow. I'm gonna run it, hop back into here. And if you go into the playground within Langflow, you can see that this is the request that just came from Cursor, um, now appearing within the playground. And then it's going to perform the task, going through all the agents and generating the report. Um, might take a while, but you can see the input value the same as what's in the playground. And then it ends up generating a report looking like this. So let's see if it does it. Might take some time but that's okay. Um, so this is the report that it ends up generating. Um, but the point of this is to show that not only can you use Langflow um, as a client in itself, but now I'm bringing in other MCP servers, kind of aggregating different MCP servers. Um, if I want to use maybe an MCP server for a specific task or a specific workflow, um, modify some of its output and then use it for a different task for, for something else, um, then you can build that within Langflow and then expose that back out as a new MCP server to then use um, in your favorite MCP client. So um, that is one of the ways. And uh, finally, for folks who um, were thinking like, yes, it's a visual interface, um, you do have the ability to build your custom components. Each of these components, as you see, have code behind them and you have visibility to it as well. And you can directly go in here and make changes. Um, so for example, if I wanted to change this custom component into something that like counts characters. And I'll call this count cars. Oh, did I do, oh, I'm missing a apostrophe. Run that. You see it returns back the value 13, counting the characters. And then again, I can change, uh, turn that into a tool, name this tool. So I'm gonna name this count cars. This is a tool that counts characters. This is not how you would describe a tool, but this is how we're doing it. And then connect that to my agent. 
So as simple as that, and then expose this um, as, as a tool as well. So we have a bunch of integrations already built in, but you have the flexibility to go in and build your own uh, tools as well. Uh, so yay, in that time that I was talking, I distracted you enough for it to actually execute. Woo! Uh, <laughs> so, um, so here is the response. Uh, it took it directly from our playground. Um, of course, Cursor has its own agent and model in there, so it kind of like changes up the report, but you see here it actually generated this in-depth report of the, the line of code that we asked it to review, um, and you see that actually come up here in Cursor as well. All right. Um, so that was pretty much the majority of my, of my chat with you all today, um, showing the different capabilities of MCP in Langflow. Um, we're moving towards a lot of different ways to kind of make this uh, a lot easier for developers to get started with. Um, uh, with MCP specifically, uh, using Langflow is also a really easy developer productivity tool. Um, and the two QR codes that you're seeing here, one is our desktop app download, so it's easy to get started there. Um, and also our community Discord, where folks like me are hanging out in there. So if you have any questions, um, ask me there, or I'll be here for the rest of the event. So thank you so much.